I'm now live. And we are recording, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. I think I was in one where one student came, so we'll see. Gotcha. And how how you guys making out um at your own institution? So we extended the deadline to November fifteenth. Uh, so For priority, All right. right? So hard to hard to go year to year now with like where we are with numbers. Right. E ED might be down, but EA might be up. <laughs> We're not sure. Understood. Guys. But what like what about like your um your info sessions thing like the the virtual stuff? How are you guys doing in attendance? They've gone down after November first. We've noticed that significantly, um, which we figured would happen. So, all right, we do have we we do have one guest with us, so I think we right. could get started. You just heard our little chit chat, like the news anchors do before, <laughs> before things happen. Um, so I want to welcome you to our session this afternoon or evening, if you will. I just want to let you know that if you do have any questions throughout the session, please don't hesitate to use the Q&A button that you can see on your screen. Just go ahead and type your question in and we'll make sure we get to those at the end. Um, also, just so you know, your camera and your microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. So that's why you interact with us through the Q&A section. Um, you can sign up for more sessions. There's, this is our last week of our, our virtual college exploration. So make sure you sign up for as many as you can before it's over. And then you can watch this recording again after the session if you'd like to. All right, with that being said, I'm going to pass it over and I'll see you at the end. All right, all right. Well, thank you. And hi there. Uh, it is a pleasure. I'm going to just load up here and we'll get started. Um, all right, now let's have at it. So uh, again, good evening. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Lipscomb, the director of the admissions office at Delaware County Community College and happy to be able to, to connect with you. Looking forward to answering any of your questions that you might have um, through the chat. Um, and we'll get started um, just by talking a little bit about um, what a community college, like what can you expect at a community college? Just a little bit of background on community colleges and themselves. Um, so when people are thinking about us, we're typically, we're two-year institutions uh, and we offer associate degrees as well as uh, certificate programs uh, that can be, can be completed uh, within um, as little as six months, um, up to two years at, at max. Uh, and again, that's really uh, for students that are interested in coming full time. We also have a number of students who come to us part time. Um, and I think another key thing that we think about with community colleges are really accessibility. Uh, so students who are attending our institution and, and numerous other community colleges, um, they'll notice that we allow students to come regardless of where they were academically, regardless of where they were in SAT and ACT scores. And the idea is we're not so focused on what you've done prior to getting here as much as we're focused on what you're going to do once you're here. We're here to support you, meet you where you are, and help you move forward towards your goals, whatever those goals might be. Um, and, and that's pretty much the, the brief, uh, the short and sweet about community colleges. And I'll talk a little bit uh, more about uh, some of the details of what we offer as we move forward. One of the key things that I like to highlight for students is really the experience. Uh, our experience is certainly a, a comprehensive one. Um, and even in this online environment, we're providing students with a comprehensive experience uh, from 80 different programs that are available for, uh, for, for you to participate in to a number of other uh, number of other resources that are available, our faculty and so on. And, uh, and again, I'll talk about uh, some of these items as we move forward. Just curious and feel free to write it in the chat. What are you interested in studying? And again, feel free to write it in and we'll talk about it I, as, as I go on, I'll come back to that. Uh, but yeah, I think um, that's big, regardless of what it is that you might be interested in studying, chances are we have it. Uh, we have something that, that's gonna be offered that can either get you out into the workforce or get you connected to a bachelor's degree program where you'll finish up your last two years. And that's the key. A lot of times we'll have students who either they don't need uh, a bachelor's degree. So they come to us with the intent of going right out into the workforce. And that can be anybody from nurses who just want to become a registered nurse and go right out into the workforce, uh, even to, to some of our, 
our folks in the skilled trades um, who are just here for a certificate. They, maybe they wanna go become an electrician or our students who might be interested in respiratory therapy. Um, students that are interested in business, uh, they just look for, they're looking for a little bit of business background before they go on uh, into the workforce. But of course, we also have a number of students who are interested in transferring and we can support them too. And we do so with over 50 partnerships um, with four year schools throughout the area. And even if a student is interested in transferring to a school where we don't have a partnership, it is possible. Our students go everywhere, not just all over the country, all over the world. Uh, we have a representation of students from about 55 different countries. So they come here and then they transfer uh, to, to other schools back home or in other countries uh, once they're done with us. Uh, and that's uh, certainly a possibility regardless of what it is um, that, that your, your goal might be. Um, 25 dual admissions agreements programs, so I, agreement programs. So I had mentioned a second ago that we had these 50 partnerships with four-year area schools. Well, to put a little bit of uh, icing on that cake, 25 dual admissions agreement programs that guarantee you admission as long as you graduate from our institution. You finish up at Delaware County Community College, you're in. I think the one catch is we want you to complete, uh, just let us know that you're essentially interested in attending these, class, these, uh, these schools before you reach uh, 30 credits or complete your first year of college in most cases. Now, if you're still in high school right now, um, if you're a senior or junior in high school, something else that I'd highlight, the opportunity for you to complete dual enrollment. Dual enrollment, not to be confused with uh, the program I just mentioned, is an opportunity for you to complete college level credits while you're still in high school. And that's big because one, it saves you time, which is certainly important. And it also saves you money. And I like to save you both. Um, and that's an opportunity that you have the ability to, uh, to take advantage of if you're here as a student right now. You can still sign up for the spring, for January, if you're interested and get some of your classes knocked out. And these classes can be transferred to other institutions that you might be interested in attending. Now, the other biggie is endless support. I think if it's one thing that separates um, us from a lot of institutions, it is the amount of supports we offer. And it's kind of crazy um, considering how inexpensive we are. We are very affordable as an option, yet we somehow manage to provide this just like just wraparound service, regardless of what it is you need. You need help registering for classes. We have academic advisors there. You need help figuring out what program you want to pursue. We have our career counselors here. They're also offering you personal counseling just to help you get through the day to day as life continues while you're in school. Um, our student disability services office there to ensure that we have a level playing field for all of our students. Our student employment services office, making sure that students have the opportunity to get the practical skills that they need to transition into their careers and actually helping them to identify match spaces so that they can transfer into their career as well as our Student Resource Center, really helping students, um, helping to, to level the socioeconomic playing field for our students, providing students with support that may face hunger insecurities or that are having issues affording books and things of that nature. Great space. They also house our mentorship program, which is absolutely phenomenal. I don't care what school you go to, highly recommend that you take part in the mentorship program. These spaces are built for you to get a chance to acclimate, get acclimated to the campus and to take advantage of one of your biggest resources, which is in my opinion, other students at the college. Last big piece is transfer advising. Not only do we want you to graduate, we wanna ensure that the classes that you, that you take will transfer with you to those schools that you're interested in attending for a bachelor's degree. If you plan on pursuing a bachelor's and of course tutoring, we have to make sure that you, uh, that you have some supports and we offer tutoring online and in person. Right now, everything is primarily online and the spring will also be primarily online but when we transition back we still offer tutoring online as well as in person one-on-one -on -one, and it is free of charge next big thing um it's more than a classroom experience and that and that's big right there's so many opportunities for you to get involved unfortunately not enough students at colleges across the country take advantage of that opportunity to get involved and as a result of it i feel like they're kind of they're, they're cheating themselves, right? You pay all of these funds, you know, even with us, I think that we're the least expensive option, but it's still expensive. You pay all of these funds to come to these institutions and to not take advantage of every opportunity, every chance you have to get free food or participate in some club or uh, sport or student employment workshop. I mean, you just, you just ought to, in, in my opinion. And I think that we provide you with those opportunities. 30 different student organizations available to our students, uh, eight intercollegiate sports uh, teams 
things that students can participate in, as well as an amazing student employment services office uh, and plenty of opportunities for you to work with our offices on campus. You don't have to worry about finding a job somewhere else. You can actually work with us. We do allow our students to work as many as 15 hours a week and we pay about $10 an hour if they are eligible for work study. So just another thing that we offer for our students. Um, and I, I already mentioned affordability. Let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. I love um, a lot of our area schools. I think that they're absolutely amazing, but cost is real. Cost was certainly real for me when I was a student going to college. Even now, as a, as a law student, uh, cost is cer certainly a variable. We want to put students in a position where you don't have to worry about that burden after you graduate because there is life after college. So we are, can put you in a position where you can save as much as, well, typically considering the average cost for colleges throughout the country, a little over $30,000, we're saving students somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000 over two years. And I'm not sure about you, I like to keep my money in my pocket where possible. And that's what we wanna do for you if that's something that you're interested in. You, the key is just coming to us, finishing up your associates and, uh, you know, and then transferring over for that bachelor's. That's where the savings are. Even if you're thinking about just going into a program where you don't require a bachelor's, where you just require an associate's or a certificate, maybe you wanna go into automotive or electrical, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Well, we're going to be less expensive than a lot of those other um, options that might be out there. So just not a bad option for you to explore. And if, it is, if there's anything that I want to like really voice tonight is that you have options as a student, 5,000 of them throughout the country. So um, again, from an affordability perspective, uh, we are the least expensive option uh, in this area, particularly for students that are in Delaware County uh, and even for students in Chester County. Uh, and we also, I mean, we, I think one of the big things for you to, to consider is uh, that we are currently on a tuition freeze, even when we're not on a tuition freeze. Uh, we never really raise our tuition by much. Um, we're pretty, we really care about uh, affordability and accessibility for our students. We recognize that there are, again, there's life after college. So, How do you take advantage of this all-inclusive learning paradise? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, literally, you're spending 10 to 15 minutes online completing our application to the college. Uh, you can do so right now if you want. Please feel free to take a screenshot of this. That is absolutely fine. But if you go to dccc.edu forward slash apply, that'll take you to the to our application page. You'll click on online application and begin to create a profile. Again, within 10 to 15 minutes, you'll be done. Once you're done, within seven days, you'll receive a you'll receive an acceptance. Um, and when you receive your acceptance, it'll actually have your next steps. What are your, what are the items that you need to complete from there? And the items to complete, uh, complete our orientation, taking our placement tests and registering for classes. You can do at least two of those. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention applying for financial aid. So to take our placement test, if you, you, so one thing that you might like and love about us, or maybe it doesn't matter to you, but we don't require SAT or ACT. I wish I had a microphone I could drop right now. Um, but yeah, you if you have SAT or ACT, that's wonderful. 500 or higher on the English and a 530 or higher on the math will allow us to waive our placement test requirements for you. Similarly with the uh, ACT, if you have an 18 on the verbal, 20 on the math or higher, um, we can uh, waive our placement test requirements. If not, take our placement test. It's not as stressful as the SAT or ACT and it's free of charge. Um, you can take that from the comfort of your home. You can actually come to campus and take it. Regardless, we'll get you through, um, get you through that and, and get you on the registering for classes. Before you do register, however, we do have an online orientation that takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. It's really there to help you get a closer look at some of those resources that are there for your success. Because ultimately, we fail if you're not successful here at our college. And that's one thing that we care about. This is our way of ensuring that students have a better shot at succeeding while they're here at our institution. Um, last but not least, you'll register for classes. You're not registering on your own. You're going to work with an advisor who's gonna help you navigate, chart your, your academic career at our institution. Um, so that's key. That's, it's, it's gonna be simple. That usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour. And, uh, but you won't do that until about April. First week of April is when students, uh, new students are able to register for classes in the fall. My recommendation, however, if you are in high school, um, is to consider registering for classes for the summer. Students don't usually like when I say that. They kind of hate it, but it's okay. Um, that, that's fine. The reason I say that is, again, my, my bias is always time and finances. I want to save you time in this case. 
um, if you start in the fall, uh, well, about 50% of students around the country typically find themselves placing into developmental courses. If you place into developmental courses, we want to put you in a position in the position where you're able to complete uh, and finish this up uh, quickly. Like we don't want you to find yourself taking developmental courses. We want to get you to college level. If you take classes in the summer, you can focus. You can focus strictly on those developmental courses. Additionally, if you take classes in that first summer, it'll give you the chance to fill us out. Um, even if you placed in the college level courses, fill us out, get classes knocked out, and now you're 18 classes left to an associate's degree, and maybe less if you're going for a certificate program. Um, and then finally, FAFSA, paying your tuition. If you're not uh, paying uh, your, if you're not paying uh, your tuition out of pocket, I would highly recommend FAFSA. If you are anticipating that you're paying it, or if you're anticipating that a parent is paying it, I would certainly recommend having a conversation with them to ensure you're on the same page. But nothing wrong with applying for financial aid. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And this provides you, um, just to provide you. Uh, with some information around that, you can go on the FAFSA site right now if you haven't already done so. Apply for financial aid, include Delaware County Community College on your FAFSA application, and from there, we'll be able to get, we'll be able to start getting you packaged in the spring, um, so that you can save funds, you can find yourself putting out the uh, uh, the the minimal amount of loans if you have to put out any at all, because we do uh, offer price points that allow students to potentially finish up with us without having to take out loans. And then my hope for you, my hope is that you graduate, that you walk around, walk across that stage, uh, take that diploma, and that you go on to do bigger and better things that include finishing a bachelor's or going out into the workforce. Oh, and of course, inviting me to your post-graduation barbecue. Um, and regardless, I'll be happy to see you succeed. Um, now, last thing I'll mention before we uh, finish up here is um, just upcoming programs and events. So any week, any like any week, you, you can reach out to us uh, and get through some of these steps of the process. If you want some uh, a little bit more hands-on help, um, including this Saturday, uh, which isn't listed here, but this Saturday from 9 to 1 p.m., you can actually call us and we will help you walk, help walk you through the application. Uh, get you placement tested, um, and you can get your orientation out of the way. Um, and we also do this every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 7. We're, we're really accessible if you can't catch that theme. The other one is our Live with DCCC sessions. Similar to this, I'll have, if you want to hear this from someone else, see if I'm lying, you can certainly reach out, uh, participate in one of our Live with DCCC sessions where one of my staff members will talk to you a little bit more about some of the resources available at the college. And we typically have special guests from throughout the college so you can get a feel for some of those different programs. We're actually hosting one right now as we speak um, with our dual enrollment department. Um, and you can find this information on our dccc.edu forward slash events page. Um, and you can also on that page or uh, on our website, find uh, the opportunity for you to participate in a virtual tour. And for each of our live with DCCC sessions, we do offer a virtual tour to our students. And this is our information, I, not just my information, but the admissions office information, information for our career and counseling center, if you're just curious about how this all works um, from a registration standpoint, if you need help with financial aid or payment, or if you need, um, if you want to contact our testing center to schedule a placement test, here you go. All of that information is right there. Take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Last but not least, you have my direct line now. You can call me anytime. I will respond. Even if I don't pick up, you will get a call back. I you can also contact me via email, though I do prefer phone call right now. And if you want to take it up a notch, I also have our vice president's information uh, right here and you can contact him as well. He's always happy to hear from you as is he happy to hear from parents. So I thank you for your time. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them at this point. You can feel free to write in the chat and I'll just wait here. How long have I worked at the college? I've been here for 10 years, three years as the director of the admissions office. I've also uh, worked for uh, three years prior to that as, the, uh, as an assistant director in the admissions office. And prior to that, 
I uh, spent two and a half years um, as a uh, campus life, a coordinator in our campus life office. And prior to that, a year and a half uh, as an advisor, as an academic advisor at the college. I have a question. So Dr. Darren, what is your favorite thing about community colleges? Um, so for me, I'm, I'm quite simple, especially with my biases. It has to be the affordability. Well, no, that's not true. I, the affordability is up there. It's for me, I think the other biggie, if it's another biggie outside of affordability, it's the diversity. It's, it's so like, and, I, and it's something, so, you know, I'm uh, as, a, as a student of a, that graduated from a bachelor's degree granting institution, graduated from Westchester University and pursued my master's there at this space where after most of the folks who were there um, came through um, bachelor's degree granting institutions. I didn't really know a lot about community colleges until I got here. And what I realized when I got here is that they are beacons for diversity. And I'm not just talking about racial um, and uh, ethnic diversity, diversity in terms of age, diversity and experiences, uh, diversity and academic ability. And like people are from everywhere. They are from every corner of the earth. They are from every neighborhood within like within the area. They, and they're also like, again, they, they just, they represent so many different segments of our area, of our, uh, of our target, our service area. And it's just, it, it really is pretty cool to see that kind of come together. Um, it's probably, you'll see, it's not uncommon for you to share a class with somebody, somebody that's right out of high school to share a class with somebody that's been out of high school for five or 10 years, somebody that's returning after they've already completed their master's degree and they're just taking up Hubble classes with us and somebody who's like retiring and they just decided they wanted to come back. So they're like 60, 70 and they're coming back to, to take classes. It, it really is amazing. That's awesome. And um, what types of colleges do you have agreements with you know, after you get your associates and then go on to get your bachelor's degree, which kind of colleges around the area do you have those agreements with? Uh, right. Um, so we actually, so a lot of them, including, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but yours, uh, Villanova. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, so it's, there's a mix. Um, there are a mix of colleges and universities, and it really depends on you and your need, what, what makes the most sense. But our biggest feeder institutions are Westchester and Temple University. And a lot of it is really around cost and location. Love those schools, both my, uh, well, Westchester, my alma mater twice and Temple soon to be. And, uh, and, and, but, you know, I really think a lot of it is around the cost and the location where like they are, they're close by um, and they are big public institutions. Uh, but we also have agreements with, uh, with Cheney and Immaculata and Newman and Eastern, 25 total for that dual admissions agreement that I mentioned earlier, where you're guaranteed admission into a school. But then we also have these other agreements with other schools. But I think the, the big piece that I always like to highlight, I get students that go everywhere. I have a student, one of my student veterans, because I oversee our veteran services at the college, one of my student veterans finished up, transferred to University of Arizona easy, no issue there. Students who find themselves at University of Pennsylvania, um, dual enrollment student who we actually just had who finished up and transferred over to Harvard. Um, it, like we get students that go everywhere. And I, I, I really mean that. Um, no, I promise I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> That's awesome. You did get a question, I think. All right. And let's see. Hi. All right. So ah, uh, thank you. Good question. Can you ex please explain more about mental health and human uh, human resources and also about clubs and activities? Um, so yeah, I think, um, so about this college thing, right? This college thing can be a lot and they don't really tell you a whole lot about it, um, particularly about navigating, whoops, navigating the day-to-day -day of college um, and recognizing that while you're navigating this new interesting environment, life still goes on things are still gonna happen. And usually what I encounter with students, so sometimes I'll encounter students who are stressed um, and you know, and, and dealing with some things that are directly related to school. A lot of times what I notice, however, is that students are really finding themselves like, you know, um, dealing with, uh, with issues that are related to things outside of school. We're here to help with that. Um, we have, so in, so in a number of different ways, right? So, so one, if it's a stressful issue, if it's something that, that's arising, something that's just in the moment, yeah, our career and counseling office is here to yeah. help. They are here to, you know, to help uh, students navigate, 
they, um, you know, they will provide a short term therapy uh, for students, short term counseling uh, for students that are going through issues like that. Uh, they're here to be a listening ear. And, that's, and I think that helps with the mental health in itself. I think the other side of it, depending on uh, you know, wh where this is with, with mental health, if this is something ongoing, if this is a, a chronic condition, perhaps our disability services office is key. Our disability services office is going to help you out, whether you're dealing with a, a, a mental ailment or if you're dealing with a learning difference, whatever it is, they're here to ensure, you know, one, that you're properly accommodated because, again, we want to ensure that you're successful here, but also that you make connections with, with folks around the campus, with other resources. They're here to serve as a liaison, and that's also very key um, to your success. Um, I think What's also interesting is some of the people in these different spaces that I mentioned, they're going to, to your point about clubs and activities, they're going to serve as advisors um, or at least points of contact for those clubs and activities. Me, for instance, I'm the advisor for our vet, for our uh, Student Veterans of America organization on campus. Um, so, and you'll see a number of folks like me who take on roles like that. Um, and there are so many different organizations that you can just try out. And I think the bigger piece that I like to tell students, if there's something that you feel like it's missing, if we, you come to campus and you don't see the organization that you're interested in, well, you can start one yourself. Um, and with 10,000 students on our campus, chances are you'll find six other students, which is the minimum requirement to start an organization on campus. You, it's, chances are you'll find six other students that share that interest. And we don't really care what it is, honestly. It can be the Waffle Appreciation Club. You know, it can literally be like uh, in, like anything. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think, the young, the, the, the Juice World Club, if you may. Um, what, whatever it is, as long, we, what we're aiming yeah. to do is essentially build a learning experience around the things that you're passionate about because we recognize that that experience will help to put you in a better position to, to one, build up your resume and make a transition into the workforce and into the next two years of college if that's part of your plan. So that's, that's I think, a, a quick way to sum up uh, some of the things that we offer for our student clubs and student organizations. But there are lots of opportunities, lots of, uh, uh, like a, a lot of chances for students to get connected on campus while other students. Also a lot of chances, uh, a, a number of opportunities for students to get involved off campus, cleanups and other means of community service. When there's not a global pandemic, the opportunity for students to take trips, um, field trips uh, to different spaces. But I mean, we're finding new creative ways to help students get involved every day, even amidst all of the craziness that you may have experienced this year. Good question. Great question, makes me smile. Any others? What's my sign? I'm a Scorpio. Um, so you just had a birthday or you have a birthday coming up? I did. I did just have a birthday, October 24th. Happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. You're so kind. I'm also an October baby. They're the best. Are you? <laughs> All right. When exactly? Libra though. Seven. Libra. Yeah. 17. No, the seventh. The seventh. I'm sorry. Hey. No, okay. All right. Same month. Yep. We'll take it. All right. Well, if there are any other questions, I'm going to move over and share one more screen on mine. Just to thank everyone for coming today. I'm not sure about you listening, but that was a fantastic presentation. I did laugh at all your jokes, Dr. Darren. I caught them. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm also team community college. It's a great opportunity for a lot of students. So thank you again for joining us. Once this uh, X is out, you're going to get a quick survey. So if you could please fill it out, that would be awesome. Again, you can sign up for more sessions. And if you'd like to watch this again or share it with your friends and family, you can certainly do that late at a later time. But thank you again, everyone. We hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye. Oh, that was cool. All right. See ya. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. You take care. It's been a pleasure. No problem. You too. Bye-bye.